All right, today we're working on a GLK 350 Mercedes doing rear brakes. And wanted to go, I went ahead and already pulled it apart, but I just kind of slipped it back together to kind of show you what's the uh, steps actually doing the brakes on this uh, Mercedes. So what I did is I went ahead and removed the five lug nuts. And this is a lug nut. I used the impact on it, of course, to remove it. And that's a 17 millimeter head that's actually on those lug nuts. As, a, as you can see, it fits it perfectly. Once I went ahead and removed all five lug nuts, I had to hit it to break it loose. That way it can remove the tire. And uh, I just go ahead and set it to the side and get it out of the way. To go ahead and start the procedure on removing your brakes. Of course, you got a torque head right here. You got the little clip right here. You got the cap in the back. You got another one at the bottom. Those are Allen heads. And I went ahead and uh, cut the rotor, but to access the rotor, you got to remove your brake caliper bracket as well. So to start the procedure, I wanted to go ahead and break, break the bolts loose. But before you go ahead and remove this, this little torque, will spin in the circle, or it will cause this whole uh, disc. You could go ahead and use the e-brake and lock it, or you can just shove a screwdriver in this brake rotor right here, and that'll cause it to prevent it from turning. Uh, I would recommend putting a little socket or bolt to kind of slide right over it and hit it with the sledgehammer, and that's gonna shock that bolt and it's gonna cause it to break loose to where you can go ahead and remove it. That way you don't strip the head and once you go ahead and remove it you can go ahead and set that disc brake bolt that holds this onto the hub itself off next step what I do is I go ahead and remove this little clip clip this held on here by a little I just go ahead and remove it with a screwdriver set that off to the side you have a little caps on the back you have two of them that houses the de uh, your Allen head. Those are caliper guide shoulder screws right here. And they're held on by seven millimeter, seven millimeter head. Go ahead and, I went ahead and already loosened it. So I'm just gonna show you. Get it done. This holds on the caliper to the caliper bracket. Of course, you have to use, you know, a 3 8 ratchet to break the bolts loose. Once you do that, you should be able to remove your caliper, move it to the side, lift it up, and that exposes your bracket, your rear pad is mounted on the caliper itself. It's on the piston due to these little brackets on the back of this uh, brake pad. Like so. That's what holds it in the piston. And on the front, the front pad. And of course, you can clearly see why it's, oh, I have to go ahead and cut the rotors. Uh, the bolts in the back that hold this caliper are 18 millimeter. Because you use a ratchet wrench and that breaks them loose. Alright, once the brake caliper bracket has been removed, go ahead and set that to the side. Of course, don't lose the bolts. Again, that's 18 millimeter. That's going to allow you access to the rotor. You want to go ahead and turn it. Usually a shop part store that actually can cut these rotors would charge you $15. On the back of the rotor it's going to show you a minimum depth in which you cannot go below. If you do, you're going to have to purchase a new rotor. I went ahead and had this one cut. That's a $15 per turn and to break this loose from the hub itself, they hit it with a sledgehammer in all directions. 
once once it starts breaking loose, you can you can start seeing a little crack in between here. That's the split in between these two. But make sure your e-brake is not on either, because this is also your e-brake. On the inside, you have two pads, one on each side, and they will be pressing against the inside if your e-brake is on. So make sure it's disengaged. If it does not break loose. You can tap it on the back side, of course. This is the only area where the caliper was at that you can actually tap on it. But you do not want to damage your rotor. So what I did is I went ahead and uh, you could take a piece of wood, set it on the back, and hit the back of the piece of wood while rotating this. All right, so just place a two by four back here and just tap it and just continue rotating it while tapping the back as you rotate in a circle so you do not damage your rotor. Once you do that, your rotor is going to break loose. So, remove it, and that's going to expose your internals. Of course, there's your e-brake pad. You have one on each side. You want to go ahead and inspect that, make sure it's not damaged, it's still good. All right, once you do that, you can go ahead and have your rotors cut, if it's allowable, or purchase a new rotor at your nearest parts store. Once you go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and start the reinstallation process. I went ahead and uh, popped your disc brake back on there and put this torque bit back in there. Of course, you're gonna just torque that to seven foot pounds with a little bit of screw right there. The next step is go ahead and uh, the brake caliper. You wanna go ahead and make sure your, your cap is popped on your brake master cylinder so the overflow and relieve the pressure but what I do is before breaking that uh, pad out of here I go ahead and compress this uh, piston back in you could go ahead and use a simple tool like this about six dollars five dollars at your parts store Harbor Freight however you wherever you want to purchase it and clamp it right here in this flat area and on the brake pad that I had right here before I remove that you can press on a brake cap uh, pad and it actually press in if you don't want to purchase a C-clamp, you can actually go to your parts store and rent a kit that can actually compress this piston back in. Once you're done with the kit, you can return it back to the parts store and get all your money back. That way you don't have a tool around if you're just going to use it once or whatnot. But C-clamp, again, it's only like $6. It's very cheap. I go ahead and just get that, press it in. Once it's pressed in, it's pretty much set up before we can go ahead and start the reinstallation process of these parts. The brake caliper bracket, when we go ahead and reinstall it, of course you got the two bolts, 18 millimeter heads. I always put some thread locker on there. That's thread locker blue uh, from Loctite 242. And uh, when you go ahead and torque these, you gotta torque them to 88 foot pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. That's on a brake caliper bracket to the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that, screw them down, then I'm gonna use my torque and set it for 88.5 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this right now. All right, I went ahead and installed the bracket, torquing the bolts at 88 foot pounds with thread locker on there to, so we don't allow it to actually back off and fall off on the highway. Go ahead and uh, pull your new brake pads out. Of course, your brake pads, when you go to look at it, one's gonna be flat, and the other one's gonna have these little teeth on the back. But it's also gonna have a little cut right here. And I'll tell you what this cut is for later. But this is on the back driver's side. Once you go ahead and compress this piston in, that little bitty deal right here is supposed to slide inside. On this, uh... All right, with this brake pad slid, in the brake caliper piston. The other caliper is gonna look like so, and all this caliper does is sit right there. All right, it just sits in your brake caliper bracket, and that's gonna allow you to grab your, your caliper and slide it right on there. Like so. Now what I would do is, on these brake caliper guide shoulder screws, I would place a little thread locker right there on the thread before installing it. And when you go to install and you tighten it, it's 25 foot pounds on these screws that go in your brake caliper 
temporary caliper bracket. Thread locker, install it, and screw her down and torque it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, with the cape uh, brake caliper guides reinstalled, make sure you grab you guys' dust caps and pop them on. All right, why don't you go ahead and pop your dust caps on. So the one. And the screws are torqued down. Next step is to go ahead and uh, grab this little clip. Now, to install this clip, you want to go ahead and pop these little guys back in their little holes that's on the on the on the caliper itself. And then you'll push the spring down and push it in. Go ahead. All right. With the clip reinstalled, as you can see, the deals go inside here first, and then you'll push them up, push them up this caliper bracket, and it just locks it in place. And that's your anti-rattle. So once that is installed. You can re-verify making sure all your bolts is tight, you guides are tight, your torque, and visually look around. Now's a good time as well to check your in, in, uh, suspension to see if you're needing to replace any parts. But if not, it's time to reinstall the wheel. All right, with the lug nuts, it's a little on the tricky side, but in this vehicle, all you have is holes. That's in your uh, you have in the back to reinstall these bolts usually I just shove a screwdriver through one of the holes and guide it to the rotor I align the rotor usually at 12 o'clock so I know exactly where to put the screw at and the slide on and push in and then I just use a cordless drill 17 millimeter and go ahead and uh, install it within into a clicks I mean that's not much but once you go ahead and uh, install these lug nuts you're gonna have to go in a start pattern and you gotta torque these to 110 foot pounds. So one, two, three, four, five. Why don't you go ahead and uh, bring it all the way in. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, knock this out, torque this down, and we'll go to the passenger side. Passenger side of this vehicle, as you can see, you got two lines to this brake caliper. I went ahead and already had everything removed, but I wanna show you, on the passenger rear, there's a sensor that's on your, your disc brake caliper to your disc brakes. Now this little sensor actually snaps in there. And like I brought up earlier, there was a little hole on a new pad right there. You are to go ahead and remove that little sensor, slide it off and slide it on the new disc brake right there. All right, and that screws on this little sensor, of course. You can go ahead and remove this sensor, but I just left it on there. This brake caliper doesn't really weigh nothing, so it's not really damaging anything just having it sit here. You could go ahead and bungee it to the side if you like, but uh, I wanted to share with you this little sensor deal. Why don't you go pop it on, pop it on your new disc brake. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, visually inspect this side as well, and you're gonna bolt everything on exactly like the driver's side. So we're gonna go ahead and get that started. All right, went ahead and popped your disc rotor back on there. Torque this little screw down. All right, that is your um, your disc brake retention screw, seven pounds. And reinstall this disc brake caliper bracket. Of course, these are 88 foot pounds using thread locker. Now it's time for the disc brake caliper. But again, the caliper, the old brake pads had a little sensor here. All right, the new one does not. You're gonna have to transfer your sensor over. Your little sensor, when you go to remove it, has this little bitty deal right here. That has to go in that little hole, all right? So that little hole's on this side, it's not on this side. So when you go ahead and reinstall it, you gotta reinstall it like so. And it should slide right inside that little hole. Then what I do is go ahead and put a little dielectric grease on here and go ahead and remount it on your brake caliper. And you gotta rehook up that harness. And the harness gets plugged in right there. The little hole, that's where it screws back in or plugs back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out right now. 
All right, I went ahead and uh, popped your disc brake back on there. As you can see, the sensor is placed back in the slot. And it was kind of a little tight squeeze, but you're gonna have to put some pressure. You don't want to flex it or you'll break it. So I pushed a lot of, uh, put a, pushed some pressure right here and it slid back in. And then I re hooked it up back into this uh, connector right here on the top side. All right, went ahead and uh, installed the brake caliper to the bracket, reinstalled the guide pins, and popped the cap back on. Then went ahead and placed the clip back in place. Of course, you got to start with the placing them in the holes and snap it into the until there's pressure against here, and that's your anti-rattle. Once that is installed, then it's time to go ahead and reinstall your tire. Of course, you got the five lug nuts, and those lug nuts again. Once you go ahead and mount it, pull it in, going in a star pattern. That way, it's even, and then uh, you're going to torque it to 110 foot-pounds in a star pattern, all right, until it's torqued. Remember as well, while you have everything torqued apart, inspect everything, make sure it's mechanically sound. And uh, once you get the tires mounted and it's back on the ground, before you go ahead and drive the vehicle, make sure you pump your brakes. You're gonna keep pumping it because there won't be no tension on it. But once tension is on there, you're pretty much ready to roll and once it's hard you're gonna go ahead and then top off your brake fluid once you go ahead and pump your brake fluid your hood release is right here it's underneath on the driver's side so the parking brake release uh, handle is right there go directly under it's a handle right here you're gonna pull it down as you can see right there and that's gonna open up your hood it the brake reservoir is located right here you got a max line and a minimum line and by looking at it you can clearly see the fluid is at the top so we don't need to add anymore to add it you simply remove this cap put dot four brake fluid do not put no other as recommend as manufacturer recommends the dot four as it shows in the cap is what is needed for this vehicle so, build the proper level, and keep it.